Welcome to Guyana 411. This week, we take a look at the preparations for the hosting of Guyana's Grand Jubilee celebrations in May this year. Stay tuned. Welcome back. 2016 has been designated the year of National Renaissance by President David Granger. This year, Guyana will celebrate 50 years as an independent nation. There is no doubt that the excitement and expectations are high for the grand celebrations. Guyana attained independence in May 1966 and will be observing its 50 years of independence on May 26, 2016. The government and people of Guyana will remember and celebrate this important milestone with a series of fitting initiatives. These aim to recognize and celebrate some of the important events, people, and places that helped shape the country's rich and diverse history. Every aspect of Guyanese society, our history, our way of life, the very essence of who we are would be on show during Jubilee Week, that period on May 26, when Guyana celebrates 50 years as an independent nation. $300 million has been allocated to showcase Guyana. 50 is not an easy thing to achieve, but when a nation achieves 50, you really, really have to look carefully. And hence, the main focus of the 50th anniversary is to reflect, celebrate, and inspire. Reflect because we need to look at from whence we came. And as the saying goes, there are a number of things that would have happened within those 50 years. And uh, important for us, is that we must create fora where we can do that reflection. The celebration of Guyana's 50th anniversary of independence started in January. A number of the celebratory activities have already successfully taken place. For instance, there was the launch of the Guyana National Golden Jubilee Songbook. As it gets closer to Independence Day itself, more activities and components of the celebrations are expected to roll out. There will be several educational activities in the form of symposiums and festivals. These will provide opportunities for Guyanese and overseas visitors to learn about the historical, economical, scientific, and other aspect of Guyana's independence journey. The national symposium um, would be held over three days. On, on the 23rd and 24th, it will be in Guyana at the Arthur Chung International Conference Center. Mm -hmm. And on June the 5th, it will be in New York at York College. Mm -hmm. The National Symposium sets out to, to encourage an intergenerational conversation on four questions. Who are we? What has been the journey? What can we become? And how do we get there? Then there are other events where the scholarly, literary, artistic and other contributions of Guyanese at home and abroad would be highlighted. The aim of the literary festival is to provide a sustainable opportunity for emerging Guyanese writers. The second is to position Guyana as a place with a distinctive cultural product. The third is to encourage literacy and reading among uh, Guyanese, um, um, you know, among Guyanese um, um, community and launch a sustainable literary festival that can support the Institute of Creative Writing. There is also a variety of cultural activities where there will be music, dance, poetry, folklore, video and art depicting who we are. These activities are aimed at unifying Guyanese through cultural expressions. In terms of the entertainment aspect, some of the major companies have um, thus far come on board. Uh, Banks DIH, Digicel, uh, GT&T, Hansen McCall. 
and they will be hosting some mega concert at the Providence Stadium of which we will see international artists come in and perform and of course notwithstanding the international artists our local artists will be gracing the stage in a major way and this was an indication um, from those companies because of course you don't want to have you don't want to celebrate in your country's own and of course inviting um, a large number of international artists so you'll have a large number of our local talent be gracing the stage the addition of several sport activities are intended to unite all regions of guyana these will showcase the young talented guyanese athletes as well as provide fun-filled interactive activities for children and families. The Guyana's 50th anniversary celebration um, is supposed to be large. Um, and of course, we would want to not only focus on the entertainment aspect of it, but of course, with responsibility for sports. Mm -hmm. um, the National Sports Commission, what we have done for 2016, essentially we have dubbed all of our events 50 Shades of games. Mm. Uh, so essentially not only the, the various disciplines that persons are accustomed to, but of course we are planning to host in all of the regions um, novelty games as well. Probable the signature event is the Jubilee Parade where Guyanese, our friends and family, would mash down the road in true Guyanese style. All would come together to celebrate the country's Golden Jubilee Independence Anniversary in a costume band parade and masquerade. There will also be the flag raising ceremony to commemorate the 50th independence on May 26. This nostalgic event would allow those who participate to witness the raising of the golden arrowhead as was done in 1966 when the Union Jack was lowered and the golden arrowhead was hoisted for the first time. The government anticipates that celebration of the Guyana's 50th anniversary of independence will help to shape Guyanese outlook for the future and that is why it has crafted a package program that seeks to reflect on the nation's journey, taking into account the people and experience that have shaped Guyana's history and the lessons learned. Security is a major concern for the Jubilee celebrations since foreign heads of states and other dignitaries are expected to visit. Tight security measures are being put in place. We are very well aware of all the vulnerabilities in a year of celebration and that is why it's important that we get our prisons very much um, in order. Um, so that we do not have in this year of celebration of big breakouts and so on. Although I know that some people are encouraging prisoners, I want to be telling them, watch them, they must watch themselves. Because we could very well get the evidence and get the information and we probably will put them in the prison. Mm -hmm. They must understand that. And I'm not going to put them in Georgetown prison. Might very well be somewhere else. Um, uh, so the, those that are encouraging those fellows to misbehave and do a lot of nonsense, they better be careful. The other thing has to do with um, the operations that we have simulate, simulated recently to take care. Uh, one was a prison breakout, one was a... Um, yes, we had an operation in relation to prison breakout. And um, luckily it came and we were ready and able, by virtue of that simulation, to take care of this riot. So a lot of people say that uh, we, are, we, we never were prepared for it. No, no, no. We were getting ourselves prepared because we knew that there are going to be a thing or two that might happen, especially in this Jubilee year. And so we did our simulations and so on. Um, that, had a hap that simulation, that exercise that happened just before the break, this bad situation that we had um, earlier this month. Um, the other thing had to do with other operations of a national level being more at the immigration level checking wh who will be coming into Guyana and having these persons red flagged who might be of persons of interest and utilizing the arrangements with CARICOM and even the Interpol and you, the, the, the other government um, systems that we have in place to check on each passenger that will come into Guyana. Um, we have been getting great results in that. Um, lots of the, those who are persons of interest, we have managed to check, send their information out, and they have been more or less cleared. Um, the 
other operations dealing with how our policemen are going to deal with um, those that can give us trouble in Guyana, drug traffickers, uh, violent criminals who are out there checking in them. And um, there are lots of other things that we are doing, but I can't tell you. Those are confidential matters. But we have tightened up on a number of areas to prevent any outbursts. As Guyana celebrates 50 years of independence, excitement can be felt throughout the country. The Ministry of Communities, along with its other arms, will be joining in the celebrations through several activities and offers. As part of its celebrations, the Ministry of Communities is offering a 50-50 deal. This is a special payment plan for the month of May for beneficiaries of government house lots priced $3 million and below in residential areas. Under this 50-50 payment plan, persons who would have paid 50% of the cost of their house lots by May 1 will be given a 50% discount on the balance. This balance, however, must be paid by the end of May. If you have a um, house lot cost $1 million, to qualify for this payment plan, you have to pay 500000 by April 30th. So as of the 1st of May, you would have already paid 50%. Now your balance is 500000 Now you are given a 50% discount on the balance. So of the 500000 balance, you're only required to pay 250000 between the period of 1st of May to 31st of May. So the payment must be made in the month of May to qualify for the discount. The payment plan is also applicable to beneficiaries of turnkey homes with regards to the cost of the house lot, not the homes. Also in commemoration of Guyana's 50th anniversary, the Central Housing and Planning Unit will give 50 persons $300,000 as a subsidy. The beneficiaries of these grants must be living within one of the government's housing schemes and the subsidy is to be used to implement home repairs. Four persons would each be given a subsidy in Region 1, 2, 5, 7, and 9, while six persons will benefit in Regions 3. A total of 14 subsidies will be distributed in Region 4, whilst five each will be handed out in Regions 6 and 10. There are also plans for the Indigenous communities, as they too will be part of the celebrations. Every community is asked to identify a project, something that would remain here as a symbol of that 50th anniversary and it has to come from them. They will have to decide that and we have been able to have 1.5 million to be given to each community to develop that idea of their choice. Monies were also allocated to the country's 10 administrative regions in the 2060 national budget. This money will facilitate the regional jubilee celebrations through various means, including Region 2's Flavor Vest Equivo, an expo which aims at promoting the region's talents and tourism. The country's three national parks are being transformed into friendly and comfortable spaces to accommodate hundreds of Guyanese, tourists, and others during Guyana Jubilee celebrations. $50 million will be spent to spruce up the Botanical Gardens, the Jovera Park, and the National Park for Guyana's 50th Independence Anniversary. The parks will be on show when the visitors and all those Guyanese who have not been home for many years come to celebrate the Golden Jubilee of Independence. For the Botanical Gardens, the buildings will be rehabilitated and there will be new furniture. A new excavator would also be bought to help keep the park clean. There would also be the installation of walkways, fence and a plant nursery. When we took over government, we noticed that one of our very important landmarks, the botanical gardens, and of course the zoological park that goes with it, were in a state of extreme disrepair. And so slowly but surely, uh, I've gotten cabinet support for us to do some rehabilitative works. It's going to cost quite a bit, and so we have reached out as well to Corporate Guyana for assistance, and the response has been overwhelming. So um, as we see today, uh, there is 
work being done to improve the drainage because one of the issues that the botanical gardens face is flooding. Uh, because as the city floods, here floods, so we're creating new drains, opening some culverts which we found that were buried for many years. We're opening those up and we're clearing away a lot of the bush that has been allowed to just grow up. The Botanical Gardens is recognized as a bird sanctuary and the minister gave the assurance that during the rehabilitation works, care will be taken to ensure that the habitats are not disturbed. Guyana is fast gaining recognition as a bird watch at paradise. And so even as we clear, we want to ensure that the birds are, are not unduly displaced. So we're not going to you know, tear down everything, but certainly uh, the place has to be cleared up and cleaned up and we're doing so. Of course, this is our jubilee year and so we're doing as much as we can, as fast as we can uh, in time for May. I think we're making progress. It's slow but steady work and uh, I think the people of Guyana can look forward to a transformation by May, of course, and continuing beyond May um, to the national parks, which include the national parks as we know it on Thomas Lands, the zoo and the botanical gardens, and the Joe Vera Park, which is just across the bridge in West Demerara. The botanical garden in the heart of Georgetown is home to the Seven Pond Monument, Manatee Ponds, the world's largest water lily, the Victoria Regia, and close to 200 bird species. The Botanical Garden was established in 1878 and is laid out on 185 acres of land. The National Park, which is used for educational, cultural and recreational purposes and is maintained under the National Parks Commission, will also be a venue to accommodate leisure and family activities. Several new projects are also being undertaken. One being a waterfall fountain that uh, will showcase um, a water feature that, that, that conjures the images of the waterfalls in Guyana's interior and provides information as to where those waterfalls are found. Uh, lighting around the new walkways that we built in the, in the gardens as well as the Victoria uh, Lily Pond and um, an educational component. The Jovera Park, which is located west of the Demerara Harbour Bridge, serves Guyanese, mostly those in and around its environment as a place of entertainment, relaxation and socializing. Getting the parks ready is part of the national effort to get Guyana ready for the Golden Jubilee festivities. This milestone achievement will be celebrated with all the deserving pomp and ceremony. Guyana's budding sector will be taken to another level as the country is expecting thousands of Guyanese coming back home, some for the first time. The Golden Jubilee of Independence celebrations has the potential to catapult Guyana's tourism sector into a whole new fast-growing pace. A large number of visitors and potential investors are expected to come in Guyana in May. So my friends, the Guyana Jubilee Festival is a rare opportunity to show the world the best of our culture and our way of life, our celebrities and everything else that is uniquely Guyanese. Guyana is finally getting the recognition we've been striving for and we have to make sure that we present our country as it is, strong, united, and free. Festivities for the 50th Independence will showcase Guyana's culture, the rich history, artists, and of course, Guyana's products and services. The festival itself will entail a number of things and events on different days. If I'm to run down a little bit, um, over the four-day period, we expect to showcase Guyana's art, its craft, our culture, our cuisine, uh, sometimes lifestyles. On each night, after one would have gone there from about two o'clock in the afternoon, there's a cultural presentation and every night is themed. These themes are an evening of spiritual upliftment, everything Guyanese, night of legends and generation next and will spotlight specific areas by showcasing Guyana's talent. Meanwhile, hotels will have a fair share in gaining income as visitors require accommodation to stay during a revelry. The bed and breakfast will open doors for those visitors who prefer a more homely environment. Visitors will also visit cafes to taste Guyana's cuisine and resorts for relaxation. Furthermore, 
There will be arranged trips so interested persons can sightsee at various locations across Guyana. Thus, minibus and taxi drivers will have their fair share in financial benefits. The Golden Jubilee celebration will display what Guyana is really about to a wider range of audience and will encourage potential tourists to return for more. Thanks for watching Guyana 411. Do join us again next week. Remember, you can contact us on Facebook or YouTube. On this Easter weekend, please remember to fly your kites in wide open spaces and be safe. Goodbye.